Welcome back. For this review, we're going to go back to the silent era film. Now, during my own exploration of classic films, uh, silent dramas was the last place I actually went, and I think that was a mistake. There are a number of really, really great silent dramas, uh, and this film in particular is one of them. Uh, many people think it's the best silent film ever made. The film is F.W. Murnau's Sunrise, A Song of Two Humans. The single most important person with this production is F.W. Murnau. Uh, he was someone who was, at a very early age, exposed to writers like uh, Schopenhauer, Nietzsche, Nietzsche uh, Shakespeare, uh, and also the plays of Ibsen. Uh, he was also a friend of director Max Reinhardt. Uh, Reinhardt was one of the most prominent directors of German language theatre. Uh, he also uh, made his way into some early German cinema as well. Muna began making feature films in 1919 and from a very early stage it was clear that he was a real talent. By 1922 he made a film called Nosferatu, uh, an adaption of Bram Stoker's Dracula. The film itself was not a commercial success but it was certainly a critical success and when people look back on the silent cinema they think this is the one, one of the most important German expressionist films ever made. By 1926, Hollywood was calling. He went off to Hollywood uh, and made a number of films there. The first of his films was this film, Sunrise. Murnau was a prolific filmmaker. He made 21 films in his uh, only 12 years as a film director. Uh, and sadly, he died in 1931 uh, in a motor vehicle accident. Two other key players in this particular film were actors George O'Brien and actress Janet Gaynor. At the time of this film's production, George was a rising star, uh, and certainly this film cemented his, uh, his reputation and certainly encouraged his star to rise that much more quickly. Janet Gaynor, on the other hand, was already an established star by this stage. Uh, she was one of Hollywood's leading ladies, uh, and at the time she had an image of being a very sweet, wholesome, and pure uh, person, or, or, or she played those kind of characters on screen anyway. But she was someone who was known for playing her roles with great depth and great sensitivity. She was also someone who had long flowing hair uh, and that was part of the attraction for cinema audiences. During the making of this film she wore uh, a very dour and rigid wig uh, which made her look less attractive which was the point uh, but again that drew some criticism. Making this movie was such a special experience for both Janet Gaynor and uh, George O'Brien. Uh, they actually made a pact that whatever F.W. Murnau asked them to do, they would agree to do on screen. Uh, and again, that trust uh, and that relationship during the making of this film is uh, what makes it uh, certainly such a wonderful viewing experience so many years later. Murnau was a great innovator and during the production of this film he introduced some great innovations uh, to filmmaking. Many of the uh, superimpositions that happen on screen are actually done in camera. Part of the film was exposed with part of the lens of the camera covered. Uh, the film was then rewound and reshot with the other part of the, the lens covered so that we had the, these two juxtaposed images. This was also one of the earliest films to use reprojection, a technique that was used very much into even the 60s uh, with filmmaking. Murno was also someone who hated title cards. Uh, and again, that was something very typical of the silent era in cinema. Uh, but again, that's something which makes this film really quite unique. Uh, there are not many title cards used during the course of the film, and as the film progresses, uh, less and less title cards are used, and they're not needed. Uh, again, that speaks to the mastery of F.W. Murnau as a filmmaker. This was the first feature film made using Fox's Movie Tone sound system. Uh, the score for the film, an orchestral arrangement by uh, Max Re Reisenfeld, uh, was recorded uh, and uh, travelled with this film everywhere it was screened. The quite beautiful city scenes that were shot for this particular film weren't shot on location, they were shot on a set which, which was constructed specifically uh, for this film. It did cost about $200,000 uh, and uh, that set Fox back you know, quite a tidy sum so it was reused again on several films subsequently. Also, the village where the man and the wife in this film live uh, was a set. It was constructed on the shores of Lake Arrowhead in California. 
As was quite common at the time, this film was shot in two different versions, uh, one for the local release or the English language release and another for a foreign release. Uh, and this film had a Czech version, uh, which was actually 15 minutes shorter and had a number of different uh, angles and shots that don't appear in the English language original. Sunrise was not a huge commercial success, uh, perhaps because of the competition it had with films like The Jazz Singer. Now, despite those impediments, this was Fox's third highest grossing film for 1928. But its lack of uh, blockbuster success at the box office meant that uh, Fox reined in F.W. Murnau on his future films and his budgets were much more constrained. This was actually the first silent film to be released on Blu-ray, which again speaks to the quality of the film and its importance uh, and another reason why you should check it out uh, on Blu-ray if you can find it. The critics loved this film. Uh, in 1929, it received an Oscar for Best Picture um, in the Unique and Artistic Production category. Uh, that was the only time that award was ever offered, uh, and Sunrise took it out. It also won for Best Cinematography, as well as Best Actress in a Leading Role for Janet Gaynor. The film is included in Roger Ebert's Great Movies list. Uh, it's also one of the 1001 films that you should see before you die. In 2007, the American Film Institute rated it as num at number 82 of the greatest films of all time. In Sight and Sound magazine's 2012 critics poll, it was rated at number 5 of the best films of all time. This is another of my must-see films for a number of reasons. I think it's a film that will really surprise you. Uh, if you're not a fan of silent films, give this one a go. Uh, it's beautifully shot, there's some great performances, as I mentioned, there are very few title cards, which can be a bit of a distraction from what's going on on screen. Uh, the story is so well told, it's so easy to follow, that the title cards really aren't needed. Uh, it's a great drama, uh, and it's something I think that you'll really enjoy. I certainly did. So what I'd like you to do is go to our website, uh, find the link, click on it, watch the film, uh, see what you think, uh, and uh, come back. Let us know what your thoughts. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed. I think you will. And then we'll see you again fairly soon for another classic films review. Ciao.